they are important because they are part of the solutions that we need uh, to address global fisheries problems. They are critical for food security and nutrition, for local and national economies, and biodiversity and climate resilience. The sector is especially uh, important in developing uh, in developing countries, uh, where uh, over um, more than 90% uh, of uh, the fishers are small-scale fishers. An important uh, component of its value chains is the many women it employs. I think Yafa should be every day. We should be celebrating, right? Because fish is so important, and because fish has a place in the human diet in the coming decades and we need more fish. We, we need to do more in terms of raise awareness about uh, small-scale fisheries and really elevate their value. For Indonesia, celebrating IAFA is not a one-time event. We also celebrate IAFA by continuing to mobilize international efforts to prevent, deter, and eliminate IUU fishing. InFish will use this year-long celebration to help raise the profile of inland fish to inform policy, advance conservation, promote sustainable inland fisheries. I guess uh, the, the most important part uh, in, in celebrating this uh, this event, um, you, you, we should focus more in terms of, uh, first of all, creating awareness, especially now uh, with talks of blue economy, we have to ensure that we sustainably exploit the, uh, the marine resources. We also need to take other actions. And I would like us to see at the end of the year that we've done or well, the year has done more than just raising profile. Some real concrete achievements and actions. And so everyone involved can end the year with a sense of impact and positive outcomes for small scale fisheries and small scale aquaculture. And, you know, ideally laying a foundation for a more promising future. Let us celebrate IAPA 2022. Small in scale, but big in value. I invite Sua Ulusapeti, TE, Principal Fisheries Officer, Samo Fisheries Division, for a word of prayer to open the Pacific launch of the International Year of Artisanal Fishery and Aquaculture 2022. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are always beyond grateful for your endless love for us. Thank you for being with us as we gather here today virtually from all around the Pacific region to celebrate your gift of life and your creation of land and sea, which both provide livelihoods for everyone in the world. Thank you for the strength and wisdom, the opportunities to gain new knowledge that helps us to be the better version of ourselves, to help one another, to provide the support for everyone in need, in particular, our coastal fisheries and aquaculture communities and individuals. For all we have accomplished, we owe them everything to you. Lord, we ask you to forgive each and every one of us. Father, we ask you for your blessings and guidance so that today's events on the official launching of the International Year of Artisanal Fisheries and Aquaculture be successful. May we commemorate these events with the recognition of its importance to many people who provide fish for food to achieve serial hunger worldwide. May you bless us and bless all the people 
who have behind these events. They have given their best and invested much of their time and strength in planning and putting all the activities in place. Father, keep us away from any sickness and harm. Protect us and all the people around the world who seek for your healing from the pandemic we are facing today. And may you reach out to those who are in danger of wars. Lord, make us realize that without you, we are nothing. And all this we pray and offer to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Inakasua. My name is Kesaya Tambunakawai from Fiji. I've been over 30 years a conservation practitioner in Fiji and the Pacific. So I'm moderating this session. The Vinaka and a warm welcome to colleagues logged in from Asia, the Americas, Africa, Europe, and the Pacific to the first Pacific event of the international year of artisanal fisheries and aquaculture, the launch. Today and 2022 is memorable in that it is the first time I am told artisanal fishery, its fisherwomen and men, aquaculture, its women and men are acknowledged and celebrated globally. I now invite Ms. Yao, FAO Sub-Regional Coordinator for the Pacific to give the opening remarks. The floor is yours, Ms. Yao. Ms. Yao, you're on uh, unmute. Can you, you're on mute. Can you unmute your uh, oh, yes, uh, microphone, I did. please? Okay. Th thank you. Uh, I'm, yeah, I apologize. Did you no hear problem. me this time now? Clearly. Okay, thank you Clearly, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Moderator. Uh, distinguished hats of the fisheries, officials of national fishery agencies, representatives uh, from all the Pacific Island countries and the territories, but also the representatives from our continents and also the countries worldwide. Uh, special uh, greetings to the representatives of uh, uh, artisanal fishers, fish worker organizations, and the local communities. Pacific Regional Organizations uh, Development uh, Partners, and also officials uh, and uh, interested uh, parties joining us uh, from uh, worldwide, uh, beyond the Pacific, uh, from Apia Samoa on behalf of IFAO. We are very pleased of uh, artisanal fisheries and aquaculture in short uh, IAFA 2022 here in the Pacific. Firstly, I must say that uh, we regret holding this event virtually due to the current COVID situation in the region. A face-to-face -face event would have been ideal and uh, we prefer to do things here in the Pacific uh, face to face as usual, and also uh, the face to face uh, communications uh, can be better and also uh, more importantly suitable uh, to our local artisanal fishers and fish workers and also fish uh, farmers, in which uh, uh, IAFA 2022 is all about. But nonetheless. This launch today is just the beginning, and we hear it, uh, from some speakers uh, in, in the video that this should not be a one-time event, but the whole year around. And also we should make this IAFA every day. So this is only the beginning, and uh, we are very much uh, very pleased uh, with this good turn out today in particularly the people and also the organizations who work directly, fishers, fish workers, fish farmers uh, of the Pacific. As some of you may know, the, uh, the United Nations General Assembly in 2017, 
National Year of uh, Artisanal Fishers, and also a very important recognition. Fishers, fish farmers, fish workers who provide healthy and nutritious food to billions of the people around the world and contribute to, to poverty eradication and sustainable natural resources use, and thereby increasing the understanding and action to support them at the global, regional, and also the national levels. Uh, the objectives of this uh, EFR 2022 has two folders. One is to enhance the vision of small-scale uh, artisanal fishers, aquacultures to sustainable development and more specifically in relation to food security and nutrition, poverty eradication and sustainable use of natural resources. The second folder of the objective and, and among small scale uh, artisanal fishers, fish farmers, fish workers, government, and key chain, as well as to further strengthen their capacity to enhance sustainability in fisheries and aquaculture, and also to enhance their social development and also well-being. Since the launch of IAFA 2022, we are witnessing a growing awareness and mobilized efforts to help uh, uh, celebrate of IAFA around the world. Uh, artisanal fishers, fish workers, and also the fish farmers in the Pacific must be on the front line of this celebration. The Pacific region, as we know, is indeed blessed with the, the largest to play a critical role in food and nutrition security. But also beyond this agenda goes to culture and the local traditions, livelihoods and economic development for the Pacific people and the Pacific economies. And here we, we have already uh, learned very repeatedly about the importance of the blue transformation and also the blue foods for the Pacific. Small scale uh, artisanal fisheries and aquaculture are much smaller in size than the large scale commercial ones. Yet its contribution is indeed very high in value, in particularly through the food and nutrition security, livelihood generation for the local communities, traditions, and also the way Pacific people live with their life here culturally. We also recognize the extensive efforts carried out by the Pacific in terms of um, uh, adopting the regional policies that recognize small scale fishers, fish farmers and the local communities, such as the future fisheries and the community based fishery management framework for action. So those uh, regional efforts also closely aligned to the principles of the international voluntary guidelines for securing sustainable small-scale fisheries. While IFEA was designated to lead the global events for celebrating IAFA, so we most uh, certainly cannot do it alone by IFEA. So, so to launch IAFA celebrations in the Pacific, it is our pleasure to be partnering with the Pacific community, SPC, fishery and aquaculture and marine eco eco ecosystem division, and also in for fish. And we look forward to building and strengthening partnerships in the region through this uh, Pacific Yafa network and also other relevant platforms, including our local uh, small scale fishers, uh, small uh, scale uh, fish farmers and also fish workers to ensure that uh, this IAFA celebration is in the Pacific is a success and also with a very inclusive and partnership approach. 
So let us uh, be uh, reminded that this celebration could entail to any fisher, fish workers, or the fish farmers listening in, we dedicate this year to strengthen our efforts to recognize and raise your voices and uh, profiles, to strengthen our efforts and to support you, and also to help building and strengthening your capacity to enable you to adapt to these challenges, but also to ensure that you will have a sustainable and resilient fishery practices. And also those practices will benefit to your livelihoods. So let's help inform decision makers at all the level uh, so that they are better worst with, uh, uh, with your challenges. I mean, the challenges that the small scale uh, fisheries uh, you uh, to mobilize the solutions, including also the financial and also uh, resources support to address your concerns and also uh, to uh, strengthen your capacity at the end, because we recognize you are the key players on the first line of uh, the actions of taking actions. So that um, is, uh, is uh, what we aim to, to, to achieve uh, through this uh, uh, year of uh, IRAFA in general. And uh, we should do it again, uh, not individually, but more collectively with the participation of all the concerned players and stakeholders, but also to, uh, to do it in a more inclusive and also participatory approach. And that inspire one another to raise awareness and uh, make action that will help make a difference. Whether small or big, for this important sector in the Pacific, we can do something together, do things meaningful and also in a significant uh, modality. So I take this opportunity again, SPC and uh, InfoFish for all your dedicated efforts to make this launch happening. And let's continue to keep this momentum going, organizers of this event. And uh, we look uh, forward to hearing from all of you who are participating at this event now, but also onwards regarding your uh, Infara celebrations throughout the year. So thank you very much, uh, everyone, again, for joining this long today. I wish uh, the remind, uh, the, the, to hear more about Yafa and how we can celebrate together and raise the voices and the profile of the small fishers and fish workers and fish farmers in Pacific. Again, thank you very much for your kind attention with all the success of the year and also this event. Thank you very much again. Back to you, uh, Madam Moderator. Thank you, Ms. Yao, for the reminder of all that is happening in the artisanal and aquaculture sector. Also, apologies for the um, for the fade-ins and the fade-outs, that's beyond our control. Okay. It is now my pleasure to introduce Aaron McKenna, an illustrator who will translate what he and the rest of us hears today into a picture story. So that would be amazing. Aaron is a Canberra-based creative specializing in illustration, comics, and graphics recording. Aaron has experience of capturing conversations for a variety of clients, including Telstra, CSIRO, the Department of Defense, and Australian Pacific Security College. At the close of the launch, Aaron will present his version of the wrap-up session. Indeed, that is something to look forward to. Thank you, Aaron. I now introduce Ms. Torika Temari, Director, Coastal Fisheries of Kiribati. Ms. Torika is the Pacific representative on the International Year of Artisanal Fishery and Aquaculture 2022 International Steering Committee. 
Mr. Rika holds MSc on resource management and BSc in biology, food and nutrition from the University of the South Pacific. Mr. Rika, you have the floor. Okay, hello again. So there will be a switch in our, in our session. Um, it will be what is on his uh, uh, presentation now. So it is now my pleasure to introduce what is Sony Lala Banua. Sony is from Fiji. Before joining SPC in January 2019, Sony worked with Wildlife Conservation Society Fiji program as its fisheries officer. He was involved in, in coastal fisheries science and management, both at national and community level. Sony is now the community-based fisheries management officer at SPC FAME under the Pacific European Union Marine Partnership Program, PUMP, as it is widely known. He is assigned to provide support and advice to government, communities, and relevant stakeholders in planning and implementing scaling up of community-based fisheries management in the region. Over to you, Sunny. Sony, sorry. Thank you, um, Madam Moderator. Bula um, Binaka to you all. Um, my presentation this morning will be on the importance of uh, small-scale fisheries and agriculture for food security and livelihoods in the Pacific. Next slide, please. Small-scale fisheries can be defined by the various uh, types of uh, habitat, targeted reefs, um, reefs, lagoon, mangrove, and seagrass areas, and multi-species fisheries, which includes uh, fin fish, invertebrates, and seaweed, and the location which is mostly within the near shore area. The methods of fishing includes gleaning, hook and line, spear net fishing, with the use of canoes or boats at up to 15 meters. A range of uh, people are involved in these small-scale fisheries, as we've heard, fisher folks, or fisher, fishers or fisher folks, which includes uh, women, youths, men, and the elderly. There's a study done by Gillette and Tawati in 2018 that uh, reveals the two main categories of coastal fishing in the Pacific, uh, coastal small-scale commercial and small-scale uh, subsistence. Madam Moderator, uh, approximately 70% of the overall fisheries production from coastal areas of the Pacific Islands is produced by subsistence fishing, the rest being generated by small-scale commercial. The crucial role of local communities in the management of Pacific Island coastal fisheries is clearly expressed by the fact that sector is highly informal and geared towards subsistence and livelihood activities, which are related to human rights to food and to an adequate standard of living. Next slide, please. In terms of agriculture, agriculture in the Pacific is a relatively recent development compared to Asia. Agriculture in the Pacific island countries and territories is often small scale and low tech and may involve local communities. Agriculture includes non-edible communities, non-edible commodities such as pearls and corals, other edible commodities such as oyster, seaweeds and, and fin fish, for example, tilapia, to name a few. Next slide, please. In the Pacific, um, comparing the offshore fishery and coastal fisheries, there's a clear dominance of offshore fisheries, both by volume and value, but only a proportion of that value of the offshore fisheries remains within the Pacific island countries and territories as government revenue. Despite the dominance of the oceanic fishery in terms of volume and value in comparison to coastal fisheries, coastal fisheries in the Pacific island countries and territories provide nearly half of the fisheries related contribution to GDP. Not only that, it is also important to note that the most of the fisheries contribution to nutrition comes from coastal fisheries and regional studies have showed that 50 to 90% of protein consumed by our rural populations come from coastal fisheries. In other words, it is our food basket. From the global perspective, uh, Madam Moderator, in terms of fish consumption, local consumption of coastal fish exists by a large margin the global average. That again indicates the importance of coastal fisheries or small scale artisanal fisheries in the Pacific, especially in our local communities. 
Next slide, please. In terms of aquaculture, aquaculture in the Pacific is small by global standard, but it's growing while fisheries are static or declining. Freshwater aquaculture is projected to benefit from climate change in the Southwest Pacific, mainly due to high temperature and rainfall. It's also important to note that there are climate smart and nature positive forms of aquaculture, like bivalve shellfish and seaweeds, which is suited for expansion in the Pacific because they are carbon sequester that can improve the environment. It's also important to note that agriculture is important during post-disaster response on food security. For example, in the aftermath of natural disasters like cyclones, freshwater fish ponds are often the only source of fresh fish, fresh fish immediately to rural communities. Next slide, please. Madam Moderator, over the years, there's been continuous decline of coastal fisheries resources in the Pacific due to concerns regarding the overexploitation of coastal fisheries resources. The Pacific have seen an impressive and in some cases world leading array of regional and political commitments to management of coastal resources, ranging from high level policies, such as the future of fisheries roadmap to detailed strategic plan for implementation, such as the MSG roadmap the NOME strategy, and the Pacific Framework for Action on Scaling Up Community-Based Fisheries Management that was endorsed by the Pacific Fisheries Ministers in August last year. It is also important to note that in the past two decades, there's been a shift from fisheries to be developed towards fisheries to be sustainably managed for development. This shift was seen through strong commitments from our ministers and leaders in 2015 to which working with local communities, fishers, fisher folks as the foundation. This regional policies also highlights the importance of secure user rights and tenure. In general, Pacific Island countries and territories formally recognize the fishing rights of local communities and fishers in legislation, often based on pre-existing customary tenure or claims on traditional fishing grounds. Last but not the least, Madam Convener, Last year, the Pacific started a new mechanism for increasing the engagement of civil society organizations and non-state actors to provide information and advice on key needs and issues associated with coastal fisheries resources. And that is the establishment of the community-based fisheries dialogue within the regional technical meeting on coastal fisheries and agriculture. Next slide, please. Almost all Pacific Island countries and territories highlight sustainable agriculture as priority in their national development planning. Pearls, seaweed, marine ornamentals, marine streams, and finfish are successfully farmed as important cash crops, contributing significantly to improving livelihoods development in the Pacific. It is also important to note, uh, Madam Moderator, in terms of the regional progress in agriculture, Small-scale aquaculture of low-value finfish, shellfish, or seaweed food security is, re is receiving renewed emphasis after COVID-19 pandemic supply chain disruptions and in order to increase resilience to natural disaster. Also in the regional progress in agriculture, SPC is currently undertaking a detailed regional aquaculture assessment among Pacific Island countries and territories to find out the ongoing and immediate term agriculture sector needs and priorities as the Pacific region transitions to the post-COVID pandemic era. Next slide, please. Madam Moderator, part of my presentation is to also introduce to the participants, to the listeners around the Pacific and outside of the Pacific, a series of videos that have been developed. The Pacific Framework for Action on Scaling Up uh, Community-Based Fisheries Management, which was uh, endorsed by the fisheries ministers in August last year, highlights the importance of information, awareness, and communications to our rural and local communities, especially our fishers and our fisher focus. As the framework starts to be utilized across the region, SPC and FAO have partnered to produce a regional communication campaign to highlight your CBFM successes through local best practices, as part of the EFR 2022. The main objective of this project is to share experiences and lessons from the Pacific with CBFM initiatives in maintaining productive and healthy coastal fisheries. 
This series of videos will provide an opportunity to showcase NAE actions in favor of CBFM scaling up and associated sustainable fishing practices. The series which will be made available to all members will also be a tool that fisheries officers and facilitators can use to raise awareness of sustainable fishing practices in the Pacific region. Next slide, please. The main message is aligned with the key message of IAFA 2022, especially the role of fishers in ensuring the responsible management and sustainable use of living aquatic resources and their supporting ecosystems. There on the screen is an example from Kiribati, whereby Taberna and Orea explain in the videos the objectives and challenges faced by the communities to sustain their fishing grounds. In this case, the whole village banned the fishing of goldfish during the spawning season. Next slide, please. Here is one example from Papua New Guinea. Jane explained the results of the CBFM program while Williams community released the smallest sea cucumbers and only catch the larger ones. Next slide, please. 18 episodes are currently being produced and should be available by August. Some are still under the approval of our members and partners. They will be broadcast on national TV in several countries and on social media. They will also be available in English and French for governments and networks as tools to promote sustainable fishing practices through visas, through fishers voice from all over the region. Next slide, please. Madam Moderator, this series of videos were produced through support from various donors and through collaborations with various implementing agencies. And I would like to thank our various donors and implementing partners for the tremendous support on these initiatives. Next slide, please. And that, Madam Convina, brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your participation. And now back to you, Madam Moderator. That's OK. Binaka Vakalevu, Sony. Um, as you saw there, there's uh, some very exciting uh, videos uh, expected to come out uh, in August. And we all look forward to having that. I think for the next session, we are playing a video from um, from Kiribati uh, on the goldfish and the spawning, uh, the ban on the spawning, uh, the ban of fishing during the spawning aggregation period. Kaiwa, Tourism, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
This next session, we are asking uh, Mele to do a uh, presentation on behalf of Ms. Turika. The floor is yours, Mele. Apologies, uh, Madam Moderator. I believe Turika is online. Uh, Turika, if, um, if you're comfortable to, to take the presentation. Please unmute and you can start. Thank you. Okay. Sorry for the inconvenience from my side. This is still with the internet problem uh, encountered at the, with the service provider. I'm sure I'll be able to finish my presentation before another technical problem comes in. Anyway, thank you, moderator, and the Miss Yao for your uh, warm remarks for the official launching of the Pacific International Year for Additional Fishes and Aquaculture 2022. I am Tora Katemeri from Kiribati, and I am very honored to be part of this launching event on behalf of my fellow steering committee members who have given me the opportunity to witness it's important events and get to know each and every one of you virtually. Today, I will be presenting on a small intervention on what is YAFA and why we should celebrate YAFA 2022 for the Pacific. Next slide, please. Firstly, I am sure most of, of you are aware of how YAFA or how YAFA has come about. But it would be good to share again today to raise awareness on how important this body has come about. To briefly summarize this idea, YAFA was first initiated during the 2016 COFI meeting where a proposal for the declaration of the International Year of Additional Fisheries and Aquaculture was endorsed. Follow on in 2017 during the 72 session of the General Assembly of the United Nations pro proclaimed uh, to 2022 as the International YAFA for this event, hence the name YAFA 2022, in which FAO has been tasked to be the lead agency in close collaboration with other relevant organization bodies of the United Nations systems. This has led to the formulation of YAFA 2022 International Steering Committee in which its main goal and purpose is to coordinate and organize meetings and discussions and now to move forward and means of promoting YAFA globally. Next slide, please. Now for 2022 International Steering Committee uh, formulate a global action plan in which a vision in promoting small scale additional fishes, fish farmers and fish workers of both genders that they are fully recognized and empowered to continue their contributions to poverty alleviation, human well-being, 
and resilient, and most importantly, maintaining the sustainable food system through responsible use of fisheries and agriculture. Next slide, please. YAFA 2022 also aims at building global momentum to empower small scale additional fishermen, fishermen and aquaculture and securing a sustainable future for, the, for these important sectors with the expected outcomes on, on building awareness, strengthening of science policy interface, empowerment of uh, stakeholders, and building network with existing and new partners in the region and international level. Next slide. In order to secure the realization of these outcomes, the IAFA Global Action Plan is structured around the seven pillars that include environmental sustainability, economic and social sustainability, and also look into effective governance, gender equality and equity, food and nutrition security, and resilience, all of which contribute to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. Next slide. News travels fast as light and we have heard great interventions from Asia and hopefully from Europe and probably the whole world will be celebrating the YAFA 2022. And we from the Pacific, why are we going to celebrate YAFA? In my humble view, we should celebrate YAFA in the Pacific because we as the people of the Pacific live in the largest ocean in the world, known to be the home to the extensive and diverse coastal and initial fisheries areas and seafood resources. And for centuries, coastal and small scale fisheries has been and will continue to play a critical role in food security and nutrition and also sustaining our livelihoods and income generations. Next slide. Although we are many small islands, but we are indeed large oceanic states, oceanic states, and the ocean remains an important part of the Pacific culture and heritage. Also fish consumption is much higher in the Pacific than the global average, which truly reflect our dependency on these resources as our major protein sources. Also fishers and farmers are also playing a crucial role to play to provide food and secure food security in this region. About 88% of the households consume fish or seafood weekly and 58 kilogram of fresh fish is consumed per person per annum in the region. Additional fisheries and aquaculture in, this, in the Pacific are in small. They are also low in catches low in fishing effort, low in cost and technology, but yet the value and contribution to local food and nutrition security, community livelihoods, and our specific way of life is so much bigger compared to offshore fisheries. Shailene, can you press button? Uh, yes, okay. Small in scale, but big in value. This is the Yafa slogan, and it is a true reflection of artisanal fisheries and aquaculture in the Pacific. Next slide. With the growing threat and challenges to coastal and near shore fishing areas through Yafa, we should also build awareness and prompt actions to help address these threats and limitations that small scale fishes fish workers and fish farmers are facing in their daily lives. And some of these uh, limitations and challenges include illegal fishing or destructive fishing practices, land runoff and pollution into coastal fishing or farm areas, unsustainable coastal developments and reclamation, tropical cyclones, 
climate change, COVID pandemic, and other disasters and shocks. Next slide, please. Let us be reminded of the potential role and capability for a small scale fishers and fishing communities as primary resource users can also play in the sustainable management of the, the, the resource as guardians of the Pacific Ocean and the responsible stewards of the sea. Let me end by asking you all these Please join us in raising the profile and voices of our small scale fishes, fish farmers, so that we can continue to enjoy the benefits of our marine resources for our future, our current and our future generations to come. I thank you all for your attention and the key best blessings of the Maori, Elf, Dirai, Peace, or the Dabomwa prosperity upon us all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rika, for your presentation. And thank you for being the Pacific representative on the International Committee. The internet issue is understandable and a reality of our life in the Pacific. So it's good to have you finally present to us. Okay. The next session will be the video, which is the last video of, of fishers from PNG. It is the story of villagers who took part in fisheries management program, resulting in bigger fishers starting to come closer and into their fishing area. <laughs> We will be in peace when we play in the Some time, we can go in peace to make him look like a bush lord up in the dinner. Walk me some work him. So Monday to Friday, I'm school. I'm going to go to elementary. Uh, at past two, one o'clock, I finish off, I come back. I can broom the house, press the pot, and I'm going to walk from me. Before I go to work, I must check the string, where all work is all right, it's up good. I can see my parents all around me, and I find them peace. You can get some pipe or ten puppies. <laughs> some plate time, we marry up to do a more mangy, so nice but taste red and we blow must fry. All WCS, all the camera, all the people, all the way, all the lookout in peace, all the men, all the rib, all the people. But we play too, some passing the lookout in Minora, Thomas, but we play the same time, we play. Part of this la management, I mean, I was a multi PC come close to the place. Or, so I played the community, I played broken this la management. So I give me played this la big flat travel now. Low out block it, so I'm all opening more big flat piece where I must come inside, low rib blown. Sustaining life blown, I play my life blown, I play the salwara. I suppose this is a bagarapa, we continue, and we pack in almost suffered some weeks. Na some more families back and feeling some struggle, Thomas. We was going to try best to rule of pain and peace, the sustaining life, the middle of the place.
thank you for that video. I now ask Tim Pickering to introduce Mrs. Arun Lata, our next panelist. Tim has worked with Ms. Lata for many years. Tim? I'd like to introduce uh, Mrs. Arun Lata, who is a small scale fish farmer uh, based in Nasori, near Suva in Fiji. Uh, Mrs. Lata is a solo parent who established her fish farm as a vegetable farmer and then uh, with the help of a Fiji Development Bank loan was able to construct fish ponds and has become a tilapia fish farmer. She's been a successful fish farmer operating at the level of a household scale business and she was able to successfully repay her FDB loan and subsequently was recipient of the Fiji Development Bank's uh, Farmer of the Year Award. But increasingly, it's become uh, difficult for economic climate and also climate climate to be a small scale uh, fish farmer. So without further ado, I invite her to tell her story about becoming a small scale fish farmer. Now, over to you, Mrs. Lata. Um, thank you, Dr. Tim. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tim. I'm Arunlata, Director of Eden's Garden. Um, tilapia farmer in Kenya. Tilapia farmer in Osori, Moody, and I'm, I'm also doing uh, vegetable farm. So my farm's name is Eden's Garden, and uh, I've got six fish ponds for tilapia farming, but due to climate change and uh, this pandemic, I've faced a lot of challenges of Thiefing and then after all the flood takes over the place due to heavy downfall. Before there used to be one flood in five, six years, but now there's two floods, two, three floods in one year. So before when the flood used to come, it didn't used to cross my fish pond buns. But now the fish pond buns are all covered with the flood waters during fl flooding or even a heavy downfall. So this is due to the climate change before it wasn't happened. And uh, I'm facing a lot of challenges to restart my <coughs> farm again, but I haven't lost hope. If I lose from my fish, fish ponds, I cover it up from the vegetable farm. So I'm trying to restore my farm again. Okay. Um, due to crisis and corona pandemic, the neighbors, they started farming. So I left it open because we didn't know who's going to survive and who's going to fight this virus. So I left all the fish the surrounding people who needed uh, protein for the on the table, so I let them just fish from the pond. So if we survive the pandemic, we can restart again. So I'm just looking forward to start up the fish farm again. Thank you very much. So thank you, Tim, and thank you, Mrs. Aruna. Mrs. Arun Lata, forgive me. Congratulations on your uh, persistence. And thank you for your big heart for opening your ponds to your neighbors to fish during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. May I now introduce Ms. Mele Ikatonga Tauati from the Kingdom of Tonga, currently based in Samoa. Mele worked with national fisheries agencies in Tonga and Samoa for 10 years. The majority of her work involved working closely with local fishing communities in Tonga to develop their community-based fisheries management areas. Mele has worked for FAO Subregional Office for the Pacific for over five years now, first as a junior professional officer before taking on her current role as a small-scale fisheries and aquaculture consultant. 
Mele holds an MSc Tropical Marine Ecology and Fisheries Biology from James Cook University, Townsville, Australia, and a BSc Marine Science from the University of the South Pacific, Fiji. The floor is yours, Mele. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Moderator, and good afternoon, Malo Lele. Talafalava to you all from Samoa. Perhaps uh, before I start, I may just um, I may just quickly mention that uh, after my talk, we could uh, potentially, um, if you wish, we could uh, open up the floor for any questions or comments um, on the presentations and the talks and the stories I've heard thus far before we move on to the uh, final um, pieces of the agenda. But uh, um, indeed, it, it is a pleasure to speak to you all today and to be part of this wonderful uh, launch of um, the International Year of Artisanal Fisheries here in our beautiful Pacific. We've heard and, and seen some amazing um, presentations, testimonies from our fishers, uh, importantly reminding us, um, uh, you know, the crucial role of artisanal fisheries and aquaculture uh, is to our region. So in this talk, I will be sharing um, some ideas of what we can do to, um, to make our IAFA celebrations here in the Pacific successful. Um, what can we do for Pacific IAFA, in which I'm sure we'll agree that we would all like to make an impact for our small scale fishers, our fish workers and fish farmers in the Pacific. So where to from here? We're basically calling everyone for action. So just to quickly remind ourselves exactly what are we aiming to achieve by the end of IAFA, uh, the four expected outputs that we've heard already uh, from Mr. Rika's presentation, we're aiming to raise awareness, strengthen policy and decision-making um, um, uh, processes supported by relevant scientific evidence. This will help empower our communities, our fishers, our fish farmers, um, to help them ensure that their efforts are indeed sustainable for future generations. And of course, we're looking to ensure that we're building new and strengthening existing partnerships to help bring it all together. So speaking of partnerships, okay, so we, sometimes we tend to do our own things um, in the region, which is of course fine in its own way. Um, but we also witness the reap and reap the benefits of working together in strengthening our partnerships, our collaborations. And I think this is something that would be critical to make IAFA um, celebrations in this region um, work and be of success. And we certainly acknowledge the partnerships that we have with SBC, the Pacific Community in InfoFish. And so the, uh, sorry, excuse me, the, the Pacific IAFA network this is something that is being proposed um, as a medium to help quickly share information, uh, promote awareness, uh, coordinate, um, plan, arrange various IAFA or IAFA related events um, uh, throughout the year. So, you know, we'd, um, we'd like you to know that you could reach out and, and um, we've, we've already started reaching out to countries um, to nominate your uh, respective IAFA focal points, whether they represent your organization or your country. But this will help us get to the right people um, because it's obviously important that we do this uh, the right way and, and ensure that our, our, our network is, is, is wide and broad enough to reach um, far and wide as, as we know, and most definitely including our local fishers and fish farmer representatives. Um, but yes, it, it can um, range widely from government to non-government organizations, uh, civil society, fisher representatives, uh, regional organizations, um, and relevant partners. Um, there's no certain limitation on who can be part of this network. Um, and so to date, we have reached out to countries um, to send in their interest. So we thank you uh, very much to those who have shown interest and sent in your uh, focal points. And we most certainly look forward and welcome others to join. Outreach, uh, a major part of IAFA, uh, celebrations will obviously be outreach. Outreach, as we know, will continue to be a, a significant part or area of our work, particularly with our local fishing and farming communities. So how could we do our outreach? Well, 
again, just reminding us of some very obvious um, but useful objectives. We could advocate, raise the voices of our fishers, our fish farmers, not just at the local level, but also at the regional and international level. This is in terms of sharing their concerns, their challenges, and empowering them, um, helping them to make informed decisions that will help them sustainably uh, manage their resources and sustain their livelihoods. Um, in that way, when they're empowered, they can also become good role models within their communities and also for the future generations who will take over the difficult but yet important task of um, ensuring sustainable fisheries and aquaculture for the future. Awareness is of course key to share knowledge um, and information and best practices in and around the region. Um, uh, best practices that uh, help us ensure that there's sustainable fisheries management in our communities. We can even um, uh, look to identify role model communities, individuals or champions. And what sort of audiences are we looking at? This is of course at all different levels. The primary audience in our outreach, we, we must not leave our fishers, uh, artisanal fishers and our fish farmers and fish workers behind. They must be at the forefront of our outreach um, and civil society fisher associations and the likes. Of course, the secondary audience, we can move um, further up to high level, regional, even global levels, uh, the general public and media to get everyone informed, aware, educated um, about what IAFA is all about. And what would be the key messages of these sort of outreach activities? Um, as we've already heard uh, earlier, uh, these can all be aligned to the pillars of IAFA 2022. So I could highlight two of those um, resource stewards. Uh, this is basically empowering fishing communities to be good custodians of their shared resources. In that way, we know that fishers have a, a fundamental role in ensuring the sustainable um, and responsible management of their resources and supporting um, marine ecosystems. And how about women in changing tide? This is obviously a big, um, an important part of our society in the Pacific, acknowledging the different roles of gender groups, acknowledging the role of women and men in, in, in what they play in artisanal fisheries um, and aquaculture. And centralizing the role of women um, is, is indeed important because it helps to empower them and uh, make informed decisions within their communities. So we're also calling to our region. Um, there, there are many, obviously many ways that you could help uh, build uh, and raise awareness around IAFA. Um, there's opportunities to organize local IAFA events or, um, or just the engagements that you plan to have with your local fishers or fish farmers where you can advocate or uh, promote awareness in those um, events. And, um, We've already informally heard of uh, several countries who are interested to hold your own national IAFA events. So that's pretty exciting. And we look forward to hear more about your plans. Um, and then moving to the more regional global audiences, um, this is just taking the opportunity to take it to the bigger stage, uh, a global, regional global stage. Um, uh, and so far with, for example, with, um, uh, taken part in an IAFA uh, Pacific side event that was taken place at, a, at Asia uh, Pacific Regional Conference for FAO earlier this month. And I understand that there's also um, uh, an upcoming side event on IAFA at the Palau Our Oceans Conference um, later on uh, next month. So these are opportunities that we can also uh, help raise uh, the voices, the profiles of our small scale fishers and farmers in the Pacific at these regional and global platforms. And just sharing as well on screen is the, um, uh, some links, some helpful links to help, um, you know, as, as needed to, to be inspired with other events around the world. There's of course um, the IAFA 
um, web page. There's some IAFA related events. Uh, there's a, a monthly IAFA newsletter that you may wish to subscribe to. IAFA social media, uh, Trello board. And there's various resources as well on the IAFA webpage, such as logos, designs for visibility materials, such as t-shirts, caps, um, that you may wish to, to use in your uh, IAFA related um, activities. And while remember, um, there's also opportunities, not just side events, but of course, um, raising awareness and advocating at high level regional fisheries meetings, for example, um, potentially, you know, raising it to our heads of fisheries during um, those regional heads of fisheries meetings. So this is just an illustration of um, using opportunities with your local consultations with fishers um, or fish workers or fish farmers to promote awareness about IAFA. So uh, we were very fortunate to have uh, some recent consultations with the Samoa Tautai Fishers Association groups in both Upolu and Savai um, earlier this month before the lockdown, uh, where we were able to um, also promote IAFA and um, um, some, some IAFA visibility uh, t-shirts um, and had some fishers who were pretty excited to take some photos on an IAFA photo frame. So it's, these are, these are um, so some ideas or initiatives that you could also be doing on the ground. And then there are also some uh, wonderful examples of planned outreach activities um, that are being organized with um, several countries and territories in the region. Um, where communities can be engaged, for example, through radio shows, um, outreach with schools or consultations. Um, we have on screen some, some wonderful and exciting uh, awareness uh, planned in Nauru and Wallace, for example, and this is in relation to their nearshore fish uh, aggregating devices or FADS program. And so this is, uh, this is an example of um, you know, using different concepts, uh, different um, activities, campaigns uh, with your fishers to also promote um, IAFA. And then there's, of course, pledges. Um, this is something that um, could uh, also be arranged. It's something exciting that could be arranged uh, through pledge boards, targeting different people, uh, fishers, fish workers, fish farmers, consumers, uh, different members of the community in promoting key messages um, around IAFA, such as sustainable fishing practices and empowering uh, communities um, and their voices. And just sharing some of the resources that are um, in existing work that uh, uh, behind the scene to uh, sort of year round reminders. I mean, this is of course, um, a, a campaign throughout the year, it's not one-off. And uh, we, we've heard from, from Sony, the, the beautiful videos that, uh, we, that are being produced um, to, to showcase these wonderful stories um, from our fishers and fish farmers in the Pacific in which we uh, plan to, to be made um, uh, widely available. Um, for example, these can be played on your local TVs or your radio programs. And so we really look forward to um, finalizing the production of, of, of those uh, videos. Uh, there's also uh, monthly social media um, uh, posts, you know, just to remind us uh, that uh, through Facebook and Twitter that, you know, this is again, um, uh, the year of artisanal fisheries and aquaculture to share some beautiful fo uh, photos and stories from our fishers and farmers. Um, and yeah, there's also been um, an opportunity perhaps if, required um, if you wish to translate the IAFA logo into your local language. Uh, this is something that, yeah, will be all ears to hear, listen out if this is something that you're interested in. Even translating the famous IAFA slogan, small in scale, big in value. How would you translate that into your own local language? Because surely this is something that uh, is important for your outreach uh, with, um, uh, our communities, our fishers and farmers, and the general public in your, in your respective countries. And finally, let's just not forget the critical role of monitoring for uh, evidence-based decisions that will help our communities, our fishers and farmers to make informed decisions. Um, this will help influence policy makers to adapt to the 
revolving situations. So this is something we can continue to strengthen and support our communities, um, whether in our different respective capacities, for example, as uh, fisheries agencies or regional organizations, uh, surely we will need to continue to work closely uh, with our fishers and, um, and fish farmers in this regard. Okay, so we were asked at the start, uh, where to from here, call, call to action. And just like this wonderful fishing net being casted, uh, away it goes, it's only onwards and upwards from here. Um, once again, I take this opportunity to, to greatly acknowledge the ongoing and uh, valuable partnership we have, we have with SBC in, in, in for fish. And so, yes, please do join us in celebrating IAFA in the region. And together, we can help raise the voice and profile of our fishers, our farmers, so that their concerns and challenges are heard and addressed. Continue to empower our local fishing communities to make a positive impact on the sustainability and health of their resources and not forgetting the building and strengthening resilience to ongoing disasters and shocks that threaten food and nutrition security and livelihoods in our communities. And this will, of course, all go towards achieving our sustainable development goals. And so, yeah, I thank you everyone for your attention and, um, and thank you, Madam Moderator, for the opportunity. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, perhaps, you know, uh, we, um, we can open up the floor in, in case of any uh, um, one has any questions or comments um, uh, from what we've heard thus far before we move on. But thank you, Madam Moderator. Thank you, Mele, for the next steps for IAFA in the Pacific and organizing the Pacific IAFA network. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, uh, opened up now for questions to any of the panelists. And I will ask the presenters to be on standby to, uh, to answer uh, questions from the uh, participants. And please uh, raise your hand if, you, uh, if we have a question. And we'll take it from there. So Richard, Richard Page, do you have a question? The floor is yours. Sorry, uh, yes, uh, Richard, go ahead. You're on mute, Richard, if you can unmute yourself. And okay. thank, uh, thank you, you very much. Uh, yes, I have a question. Um, in aquaculture, generally, the, the uh, loans that are given in most parts of the world are through specific fisheries banks. And I thank uh, Tim Pickering from the SPC for mentioning that there's nothing like uh, nothing like uh, a, a grace period bank yet for loans in aquaculture. But um, why hasn't uh, something like that been developed for Pacific communities yet? Thank you, Tim. Would you like to take that? I think it's a question of volume, but the consistent message coming through from enterprises uh, that we're familiar with is the difficulty of raising finance and that no banks really seem to understand them. So the uh, enterprises that have got established have been doing so with their own savings or, or other means. And commercial banking sector uh, doesn't seem to look upon fish farming uh, that favorably, mainly because they don't understand the sector and a knowledge gap uh, is risk uh, to a banker. So even if the risk is manageable, if they don't know what the risks are, because they're just not familiar, they are not inclined to lend. Uh, whereas for agriculture, it's much better understood. For small-scale fishing, I'm not sure what the situation is. Uh, I think um, most national 
development banks will lend on a fishing boat, uh, a Yamaha fiberglass and an engine, and it is possible. Uh, but there is the issue of collateral, that uh, if you don't have collateral, people don't want, want to lend. Uh, and it's a difficult area for anyone to get into. These are very large investments for a household uh, scale to make. And it's a big barrier that uh, deters entry into both uh, inshore fishing and aquaculture. We need something like the Rabo Bank or other similar concepts. Uh, but again, uh, we don't have enough uh, fish farmers as yet to really provide the volume of business uh, for that kind of thing. But this needs an investigation. We need to get to the bottom of uh, why we can't do what other regions of the world are doing in this area. Uh, I hope that uh, answers your question. Thank you very much, Tim. That does answer my question. And um, I, I've been looking into this issue specifically in Palau and uh, the issue that's come up uh, many times with many of the fish farmers is that the terms of bank loans uh, don't seem to recognize the grace period required for the repayment of uh, loans in fisheries. Um, they do understand it for other industries, uh, but specifically fisheries is often left out. And I found uh, in working with uh, groups from uh, Norway, Israel, um, other areas uh, that banks are in place that do fund fisheries and they have been quite successful for community-based uh, aquaculture and community-based fishery activity. Um, that's part one. Part two is, is there any uh, Pacific-wide uh, cooperative system or cooperative network of fisheries set up uh, to support uh, community-based uh, fisheries and aquaculture. Uh, again, if I uh, may presume to speak for fisheries, given that I'm from aquaculture sector, uh, the phenomenon of uh, fisheries associations at this level seems to be relatively new. For example, here in Fiji, we've only got a couple of uh, fisheries associations, Kandabu Fisheries Association is one. In an aquaculture, uh, uh, there's been some clustering in Fiji and establishment in the last two years of uh, tilapia Fiji as a, a national uh, association for uh, tilapia fish farmers. But uh, Samoa also has something and uh, I could invite Sapiti Titi to comment more about that. Uh, but it's a relatively recent phenomenon to actually organize. Uh, up until relatively recently, everyone's been going it alone and uh, there hasn't been uh, uh, a lot of uh, support from uh, uh, fellow members in the sector. Uh, those in the countries I'm familiar with, it, there are uh, regions which are uh, parts of the Pacific which are further ahead in this regard than others. But uh, even at a national level, this is just relatively recently uh, getting into gear. And at a regional level, uh, that, that's a different level again. Uh, I'm not aware of anything as yet. Uh, and that's something which would need to be talked about. Thank you, team, for clarifying that. So if we have no further questions uh, forthcoming, uh, I will now ask uh, Aaron McKenna to give us his take on the, uh, on the launch as our wrap-up session. There we go. Is that coming through? Is that coming through? Excellent. Uh, yeah, so there's, as you can see, I've tried, I've, I've captured uh, all the amazing information that's come through. So thank you very much to all the speakers today. Um, I, I hope that that's a, a decent picture of, of what was said. Um, even sort of tried to capture the sort of the big fish and the goldfish down the bottom from the videos that were really good as well. Uh, so I'm going to take that and add a few more pictures to it, I think. Uh, but that's, yeah, that was the, the summary of what I heard today. So once again, thank you very much. Wow, thank you. So that is formally our wrap up session and just a couple of points from me. Um, so this small scale big in value, uh, I think is, is important. I think most of us here grew up in uh, local communities and coastal areas, and we grew up on uh, inshore fishery produce. So absolutely. 
And the other point uh, from me is that uh, in terms of contribution to nutrition from coastal fishery is a very, very large percentage um, uh, happening in the Pacific. A, a very minor portion of that comes out of our offshore, offshore fishery, though the government, a lot of the government funds come out of that. Yes, those are the two points uh, from me. And I thank the host organizers for organizing the launch and to you all participants for logging in and uh, uh, celebrating the launch of the uh, International Year of Artisanal Fishery and Aquaculture. Thank you very much. Nimo de Manda.